Thank you so much for tuning in to Near Foundation's third town hall this year. Uh, super excited to uh, kick this off and uh, extremely appreciated for all of you being here. We have a, we have an uh, action packed agenda today. And uh, without further ado, thank you so much for uh, for sharing the deck, David. I'll go ahead and kick things off to Marie for an introduction. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. Um, welcome to our town hall. Hopefully this time it's now working on YouTube live. So we test, we learn, we leave and we improve. Um, as a reminder, before I start, the intent behind these town halls is to enable more information sharing, more celebrations and a platform for the ecosystem, you guys, to exchange thoughts and ideas. So if there is something you want to talk about at a future town hall, please get in touch. We're hoping here to bring you more structured visibility on key projects within the ecosystem, celebrating wins and progress and providing a more transparent view on everything that is actually happening. Uh, it's been quite a couple of weeks since we last uh, spoke and there is actually consensus which is fast approaching and we hope to actually be able to meet many of you if you're going there, uh, April 26 to 28, uh, there will be quite a big presence from uh, near there and multiple exciting announcements. So unfortunately today, you know, when we were planning actually the agenda that we have a lot that we're holding back and so <laughs> stay tuned for more that is obviously uh, that is coming definitely next week, but nevertheless, there is quite a lot uh, for today in the agenda. There is two topics so that I wanted to actually uh, address because I know while things are going well in the ecosystem, there is definitely two areas 
uh, that need actually work and improvement. So one is DeFi, and at the last town hall, actually, there were questions around that. On the back of that, Kendall from Proximity posted uh, actually uh, on alpha.near.org uh, the context also of what's happening and, and what the plan is. Um, Kendall can't be here today for personal reasons. Nevertheless, he will be with us at the next town hall and will share a more updated view on actually DeFi. Since the last town hall, I'm sure many of you have seen, Binance uh, has actually listed USDT native, uh, which is a good news. And we're still uh, in the work for getting USDC uh, native coming and soon, hopefully. Now for NFT, which is also another area in the ecosystem that does this work, you will hear today from the creative DAO uh, in particular. Uh, and there is also infrastructure in place, which Marcus is going to share uh, within our actually ecosystem updates, such as, for example, Recur. Few and Far is seeing a tremendous growth with over 12,000 uh, monthly active account up from 2,000. Way to go, Few and Far guys. That's really good. However, NFT volumes on here are still something that is actually uh, quite low. So I just wanted to address these two things because I'm sure that there are actually uh, things that you are also thinking about uh, in terms of what's going on in the near ecosystem. Now, if we uh, actually talking more about that, uh, Marcus is going to set up an NFT working group uh, in partnership and with the help of the Near Digital Collective. So stay tuned for how to participate. But if some of you out there actually do want to participate and help, uh, there will be plenty of opportunity to do that. On our agenda today, I'll briefly go over uh, the Near Foundation mission and strategy. Uh, David will share metrics on the latest and also what we are looking at for Q2. Uh, Marcus will share the latest exciting ecosystem updates. You will hear for a sample of regional hubs uh, and DAOs, Riley from Vietnam, uh, Kevin from Kenya, and uh, Sahil from the Creative DAO on all the things that those teams are actually and, uh, doing and working on. Uh, Yadira will have an exciting update about everyone's favorite uh, event coming later this year. It's it's not consensus. Consensus is going good. <laughs> it is our event, <laughs> NearCon. I'm sure everybody is wanting to know where it's going to be and when it's going to be, so stay tuned for that. And to wrap it up, uh, we are going to give you a teaser into, in particular, some of the announcements and the things that are coming for consensus regarding the blockchain operating system. And before getting into the rest, again, reminder, if there is things you want to talk about, please reach out and for upcoming agendas, we will actually work with your ideas to continue making this agenda meaningful for everybody. Now, Near Foundation's mission, uh, our role and our goal is to support the ongoing growth and development of an autonomous and decentralized uh, Near ecosystem. We thrive when you thrive, and our role is actually to make uh, each and every one of you uh, successful. Now, what our convictions, in particular, given the market we're in, our convictions remain that uh, it's all about users, right? There's been actually a lot uh, in past cycles, uh, in, in crypto in particular, that is not necessarily focused on users. Near is uniquely positioned to have very usable, scalable solutions, in particular with the blockchain operating system, when actually it doesn't really matter for the end user what technology this is built on. And so that remains a conviction uh, the technology, and as you can see, and you will see more, so with the blockchain operating system, all the pieces that are coming together are making actually near a forced and front uh, on that uh, innovation scale. And we can scale, we prove that with a sweat coin, we're looking for other dApps and apps to actually continuously uh, help uh, working on that front. Now, the approach to get to that, We've talked quite a bit about actually the bow tie, but it's uh, at the same time attracting uh, Web2 and Web3 uh, partners, but also working with the community, things such as the NDC or Near Horizon, and ultimately everything tying up nicely into what we call the blockchain operating system to have the best actually possible user journey, uh, whatever actually chain uh, things are being uh, built on. And with that, uh, DW, I'm handing over to you. Thank you, Marie. Cool. So, cool. Uh, yeah. So, two weeks ago, we shared our Q1 OKR performance. Uh, and for this town hall, I wanted to share what we have in store for Q2. Uh, so, starting with the North Star, uh, we're setting out to have 1.2 million monthly active accounts. Uh, now, if you remember, uh, our goal in Q1 was 2 million, which we came short at, at just under a million, they put 900,000. Our goal now for the North Star is 1.2 million. And 
The reason for this being a bit lower than the 2 million goal we had in Q1 uh, is we now have a more sophisticated uh, model and, and path forward for the rest of the year. Uh, and so this takes into account all of the, the, the BD partnerships that we're announcing and a few other initiatives such as the BOSS, such as uh, Near Horizon, uh, et cetera. And so there is, is a more sophisticated view of uh, the plan to get to the, two, the 10 million by the end of the year. And as part of that, we will have 1.2 million by the end of this quarter. And then the three main themes of OKRs, same three themes as before, uh, just with updated metrics as you as you can see here. And then going into them, oh, first with the North Star. So yeah, the goal is 1.2 million monthly active accounts by the end of the quarter. That's what this dotted uh, green line represents up here. And where we are now is, is just under a million at 970,000 MAAs. Uh, there's been a few weeks of, of slight growth, uh, but still still a bit to go to get to the 1.2 million, which we will do, uh, especially after uh, consensus when more people see the boss and there's a ton of more excitement about all things all things near. The first, op, uh, first OKR uh, near is the blockchain operating system. So the way we're tracking this right now is three key metrics. On the left is showing near social or boss adoption. Uh, we have nearly 8,000 uh, users to date, uh, and we will see this definitely shoot up in the next couple of weeks after consensus. In the middle is showing near follower count on Twitter. Uh, we, as of now, have just under 1.7 million Twitter followers on the core uh, protocol uh, handle. And then on the right, uh, near share of voice on Twitter. Uh, so this is a new metric that, that we have been uh, digging into the past couple of weeks. Um, as of now, it shows uh, roughly 3.5% share of voice on Twitter. Uh, this is comparing near to a few peers uh, and looking at uh, a, a list of 10,000 plus um, key opinion leaders uh, within crypto Twitter. And it's looking at how often is near mentioned versus uh, the peers. Um, as of yeah, so as I mentioned, we are now at 3.5%. Our goal is to increase this by 50% to around 5 or 6% by the end of the quarter. Uh, the So we're definitely marked red currently, but there is a ton of work actually going now into this to better understand exactly which geos, which topics, et cetera, are we underperforming and overperforming. And we're planning new initiatives to really bolster this uh, in the next couple of months. The second main OKR is, is all about near becoming a thriving decentralized ecosystem. Uh, the key metric here is amount of external capital being raised by near projects. Uh, in the past, we showed a different view of this that included multi-chain projects, um, but uh, we are changing this to focus exclusively on near native uh, projects. So last time we showed six, uh, but if we look at just the, the, the near native projects, uh, it's four. So OFP, Calamero, Few and Far, and Orderly have collectively uh, raised $24 million year to date. So congrats to all of those teams. And then the third OKR is, is near is where Web2 goes to become Web3. Uh, and the primary way that we're tracking this and showing this, um, and this, this uh, we debuted two weeks ago, uh, nearatlas.com shows this live. Uh, it's looking at all top projects uh, in the ecosystem ranked by uh, past 30 days uh, MAAs. And then just a few key callouts here, uh, few and far, Paras, Orderly, have all seen uh, great growth recently in the past past couple of weeks. Congrats to those teams. Uh, and near social, which is uh, the, the boss primarily, uh, we have seen a decline here um, after the ETH Denver uh, bump. Uh, so marking it red here, just to kind of show that, that we are declining there. However, um, a lot is going to be uh, unveiled uh, in the coming uh, next week at consensus. And with that, Marcus, uh, over to you. Awesome. Thank you for the update, Dave. So uh, a lot of exciting things happening in the near ecosystem lately, and I want to do my best to be able to cover them in this section uh, with a limited amount of time. As I mentioned in the last two, can't cover everything as much as I'd like to. Um, so here are some awesome things that have happened over the past couple of weeks. I want to kick off this session with uh, this section with the fantastic partnership between Takuno, uh, which is one of Near Balkans Hub's most innovative projects, and MasterCard, uh, which brought a unique gamified uh, NFT experience to the recent Money Motion FinTech conference in Zagreb, Croatia. 
by offering attendees proof of doings as NFTs, gamifying their conference experience. Uh, the success from this partnership showcased how Near and Web3 uh, can help brands engage with new audiences through blockchain gamification. And yet another uh, exciting partnership facilitated by the Near Balkans Hub is uh, the recently announced partnership between Near and Nansen, uh, which is a leading blockchain analytics platform. This uh, collaboration led by the Near Balkans Hub will see Near Foundation and Nansen working together on future updates around Nansen query and macro dashboards. Uh, it's absolutely amazing to witness and highlight all the awesome things the hubs have been working on and delivering, uh, which you'll all actually get a glimpse of in a later section in the town hall. So uh, next up, Near and Rove recently joined forces to simplify Web3 ticketing and loyalty for brands. Rove's next release, Rove World V2, is a user-friendly one-stop mobile ticketing solution and loyalty rewards program being built on Near, which will help bridge the gap between Web3 tech and end users, aiming to make NFT experiences more accessible and enjoyable for everyone. Uh, with Rove's easy-to-use mobile app, users can mint NFTs in seconds and access the in-app store featuring major brands, sports leagues, and musical artists. Uh, this collaboration not only brings more prominent brands into Nier's orbit, but also demonstrates how Nier continues to make significant progress in the sports and entertainment verticals. Uh, Rove's vision aligns perfectly with Nier's Web 2.5 strategy of onboarding the next billion users into Web 3 as effortlessly as possible. And this partnership is a significant step towards making Web 3 truly accessible and user-friendly. And next up, I want to highlight the recently announced partnership between Near and Recur, which will bring significant benefits to Near's ecosystem and users. Uh, Near's integration into Recur's suite of products will make it even easier for brands and developers to build on Near with the integration. Um, projects on Near, such as SailGP, Paras, Few and Far, et cetera, can access Recur Builder, which is an enterprise-grade platform that makes it simple to create and scale Web3 experiences for various applications including products, marketing, and video games. For instance, uh, SailGP can now use Recur Builder to create innovative Web3 experiences for their worldwide events, uh, fans, and DAO members. Uh, similarly, Few and Far, Paras, et cetera, uh, leading market uh, NFT marketplaces on Near can enhance the experience for its emerging artists and users with engaging Web3 features. Uh, this partnership benefits the entire ecosystem uh, as Recur users can now withdraw and trade their NFTs on the Near network opening up new possibilities for users to explore and engage with over 400,000 new NFTs and over 40 new projects. Uh, Marik lightly touched up on this earlier, so uh, I do really want to highlight uh, the exciting update regarding Binance, which just recently announced their integration of near-native USDT into the platform. This is an absolutely huge integration, as now over 4.5 million people will see this right there every time they withdraw or deposit USDT on Binance. All right, next up, um, MailChain Workshop. So in the last town hall, I did highlight MailChain's integration with Near, uh, which enables developers to add secure and private communication to their dApps uh, using MailChain SDK. Uh, well, the Banyan team will be running a workshop tomorrow, April 20th, with the CTO of MailChain around integrating Web3 messaging into your dApp uh, using the MailChain SDK. So definitely be sure to register and get involved in this. Uh, next up, I want to highlight uh, some exciting news about a couple of new features that have now been implemented. Uh, I know these have been talked about uh, on socials, throughout the community, but now zero balance accounts and meta transactions, uh, which will provide a better user experience and make near even easier to use, are now uh, implemented. Uh, so now it's possible to create near accounts with zero with a zero near balance, and wallets and apps can pay transaction fees on behalf of a user. So zero uh, zero account balance is pretty straightforward. However, just to provide a brief overview of meta transactions, so in simple terms, uh, meta transactions allow users to make transactions without worrying about paying the, the gas fees themselves. So instead, a third party called a relayer takes care of the fees for them. For example, imagine Alice wants to send tokens to John but doesn't have enough near tokens to cover the transaction fees. Uh, with meta transactions, Alice can create a request, sign it, send it to a relayer. The relayer will complete the transaction and pay the fees for Alice. And lastly, I want to close this section off with a couple of communications around important platform transitions. So uh, these have been widely talked about um, over the past weeks, months, etc. Uh, and I definitely want to address these. My Near Wallet um, has successfully transitioned to the Meteor Wallet team uh, in January 2023. Near Foundation and Pagoda sought proposals for maintaining My Near Wallet. 
Uh, the Meteor Wallet team was chosen in February, and the transfer was finalized in April, and now oversees the Minear Wallet code base. Uh, so the, the Meteor Wallet team now oversees the Minear Water, uh, Wallet code base and communication channels as well. One of their immediate focus areas is implementing a new support system, including visual bug reporting, user manuals, transparent roadmaps, and feature suggestions. Uh, the roadmap is also available for viewing and discussion directly on Near Social, so definitely check it out. And lastly, uh, this one's been pretty big in the ecosystem, so I definitely want to address this. It's been a lot of discussion around Astro Dow and what's happening with the transition. Well, I'm very happy to let you know that uh, Near Developer Governance recently announced that the Wonderverse team has been selected to take over the Astro Dow project after expert review and scoring the highest in the evaluation process. Uh, and the NEAR community can expect new AstroDAO features and integrations within the next two to six months. So huge congratulations to both the Meteor Wallet and Wonderverse teams. And that wraps up the ecosystem highlights section. So next up, I'll hand it over to Shreyas, who's leading the community update section. Thanks so much, Marcus. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, today, we want to give you a uh, share some quick updates on the community side of things. Uh, today, you'll hear from two of our community-focused regional hubs, which is near Vietnam and near Kenya, uh, as well as one of our uh, grassroots DAOs, the Creative DAO. Uh, we were actually hoping to have the marketing DAO for this call, but unfortunately, they couldn't make it uh, this time around, and we'll have them on in the future, along with other uh, regional hubs. So with that out of the way, I'd like to invite uh, Riley to kick things off um, with updates from near Vietnam. Okay, hello, hello from Vietnam. So I'm really excited to share with you more information about new Vietnam Hub activities. Okay, so yeah, this is our team. So we also have a small office in Vietnam uh, with around 15 people in our team. And some of the main activity of the new Vietnam Hub at the moment, we are focusing on building the community, both the retail community and also the developer community, and also focus on education to training more developer. And especially we train for the web two developer to web three developers. So we have three uh, education program, the program to training uh, for the student, for the IT student in the university, the training for the Web2 developer, and also some of the section for the Web3 developer. And we also organize a lot of hackathon to create environment for the developer to practice and build up the product and continue to build up the relationship with all of the developer. We have the activity to mentor and supporting for all of the project from the hackathon to deploy the project on the mainnet and, and keep going on supporting for uh, applying the, on the developer DAO. And uh, on this community side, you can see that we have a variety of the channel uh, with like many different topics like DeFi or NFT uh, to update in all of the information to the community and let them can have many different topics on together. And also we have the official Twitter in Vietnam, near Vietnam, with the arm of to support for the new ecosystem and also promote for all of the project in the new ecosystem as well. So we're willing to have all of the collaboration or the co Cross marketing with all of the project from the new ecosystem. So please feel free to contact me uh, if you guys want to have any activity in Speaknet. And upcoming some of the activity of the New Vietnam Hub uh, from now until the Q3 of 2023, we will organize two boot camps which focus on growth and also the BOS to drive more uh, projects uh, to build the front end, decentralized front end on the BOS. And we also had a unit tool to promote about new ecosystem inside the university, inside the MOU with, with the university to have some of the blockchain program inside the university to teach for the student. And on the marketing and community side, we will online a tour for the meetup of me on all of the biggest cities in Vietnam from the north to the south and the middle of Vietnam. And also online the, the biggest hackathon in Vietnam to with the, with the topic of unlimited hackers to write up more projects on the front end of the BOS. And so excited that this year we will have the near Park event happen in Vietnam and I will share more information about this later. And also uh, the other side from the project supporting, we are supporting and mentoring for six projects and ongoing to support them apply for the developer DAOs. Okay. Thanks so much, Riley. Uh, over to you, Kevin. Awesome. Thank you so much, Trias. Um, I hope you guys can hear me 
Well, loud and clear. I'm happy to see everyone here. Um, so yes, my name is Kevin Imani. I'm leading the Near Kenya Hub. Um, so I'm going to showcase you a little bit of the grassroots strategy that we have um, in Q2. So the, the vision that we have, uh, it's really sort of empower Kenya and the people within Kenya through Near Protocol with the goal to drive blockchain innovation for a better future. Um, and the way we're going to do that, which describes in the mission, is to sort of establish a vibrant um, Near Protocol community uh, in Kenya by bringing together individuals and also organizations to explore the potential of blockchain technology. So this is kind of to showcase you some of the impact that we've managed to do in the last two months, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, so we won the um, Web3 Community in Africa Prize in the IBC Summit um, and Conference in Dubai, which was pretty cool. Um, I was also listed um, as the top 100 Web3 front runners in Africa. And I think this is great to sort of like get the influence to, to drive our missions as well. Uh, we've gotten an opportunity to um, practically a partner with uh, Unstoppable Women on Web3. Uh, they want to bring, and we're going to be doing this together to bring 6 million African women on Web3. And I think it's going to be great for the boss as well, um, that kind of user base. And I've also spoke at the uh, the Blockchain Africa conference, uh, which I think was one of the, I would say, one of the best moments, I think, um, for, for near um, Kenya specifically in the last few months. The topic was about why Web3 needs Africa and what you can do about it. Uh, it's also on YouTube. Also a great learning experience. Um, so to kind of give you a little bit of the numbers of our community, so we have about over 3,700 3,590 members all across the platforms. Uh, we've been mentioned in a few articles in the last two months, um, reached over 4,398 um, people read, reading it. And we also have been uh, mentioned about seven more articles last month, which will uh, showcase that. Um, also been invited to speak at Davos in the World Economic Forum, um, addressing the wealth gap and using technology and, and business innovation, which was also great to kind of uh, provide that um, vision and also um, more exposure of the hub. So yeah, we can get to the next one. And so I try to sort of consolidate a little bit of mostly what we focus on and what we're going to be focused on in Q2 um, in sort of our girls and KPIs. So really the first point is to grow the near Kenya community. I think this is, you know, something that we're going to be focusing on and try to do new um, cool metrics as well to, to measure that. Uh, increased share of voice is also some important. We really want people within our community to feel that they belong in the ecosystem um, and they also can contribute to it. And the third part is to really sort of increase also the adoption of the near ecosystem projects. I think people are want to see more of what's going on within the ecosystem. And so we wanted to really leverage and increase that adoption as well. Um, so yeah, my name is again, Kevin Imani. And if you've got any other questions or if you feel to, you know, you want to contribute or, or help out, um, yeah, feel free to contact me. Telegram is mazi-101. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. Sweet. Thanks so much, Kevin. Uh, over to you, Sahil, for kicking us with Creators DAO. Thank you, Shreyas. Hi, everyone. I'm Sahil from Creatives DAO, which is an ecosystem DAO, and uh, we've been in operation since the very beginning of Near Ecosystem. And there are a lot of updates that I'd like to share with you today. We funded over 80 plus creative projects in just two years, and we have our communities and members in 25 plus nations. And we've generated over 54,000 NFTs as per our last bin based report. And we've massively contributed to the on chain activity due to a high number of active communities around the world. To give you an overview of how we operate, we have four quadrants we focus on, community being the fundamental, decentralization, BOS, and partnerships. Community, uh, for community, we have global DAOs where uh, projects have cross-cultural and multi-ethnic teams. We've created our charter with community feedback for NDC V0, which will be the center of our trust instrument going live. We are also focusing on existing Web2 creative communities so they can use near infra and use their existing cohesion to facilitate massive onboarding for creatives. Second part is decentralization. We're working actively towards creating work groups to support new and old DAOs and individual artists. Creatives DAO was the first DAO to move towards community-based governance and now we are on our version three of governance. And we're also the first ecosystem DAO lined up to be funded by NDC. And we have assisted in forming many governance processes and, and we're pioneering in the launch of NDC V0. In future, when NDC V1 goes live, our goal is to have treasury and governance managed by the community, eliminating need for central moderation. 
We're closely working with GWG and will adopt various tooling and governance structures to make this possible. We also have an accelerator for creatives, which has been discussed and will be formalized soon, led by OGs of Mayor and community participants who have seen Creatives DAO from inception. Third point is BOS. We have, de uh, we have deployed our own BOS gateway and finding ways to gather useful widgets. And we want to create one dashboard for DAOs to use. This dashboard can evolve through time to adapt to the need of the community and will be a useful portal for, uh, for non-tech creatives to start learning how to interact with blockchain in an easy way. We're also gonna be in touch with Neo Foundation team to help propagate the word around BOS for more communities to participate in building on it. The fourth part is partnerships. We've, we're gonna partner with Radio One India, hosting India's first Web3 hour nationally, interviewing Web3 projects, artists, communities, entrepreneurs, and leading tech company CEOs for more visibility and awareness. We're also potentially looking to partner with ETH Milan, which is still in talks, and we'll update you once it's finalized. And we're going to host a lot of creative events around the world to help educate and onboard uh, creatives from all around the world. Some of our recent wins, and because we don't have time, uh, just talking about four right now, uh, DAO Records, which is one of the oldest DAO on Nier, who have uh, brought Grammy-nominated artists to mint their NFTs on Nier. We partnered with Free Artist DAO, which is an external DAO, uh, which will provide extra funding support to creatives community on Mir. Swara DAO, which has created uh, events with Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy in, in, uh, in Indonesia. Dimension DAO, which is a Web2 community of over 45,000 architects and designers who will be transitioning their existing community to Nir and will have events in best design colleges and institutes of India to onboard young talent to their marketplace, which will be built on Nir. We're actively looking to expand our community and help more creatives build on Nier. We're looking to partner with uh, within our ecosystem and to bring communities from outside. So if you are a creative, a part of a creative community, or if you have any creative communities who would like to build on Nier, then please scan this link and ask them to join us. And lastly, if you have any creative organizations, institutions, or creative Web2 communities who want to learn more about how to build on Web3, please share this link as well, and we'd be happy to help them with any assistance required. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Riley, Kevin, and Sahil. With that, I'd like to kick off to you, Adira, for talking to us about events. Awesome. Thank you, Shreya. It's been great to hear all of the amazing updates from the community and the creatives now. All right. So a lot of you have been in our DMs about Nearcon. And with that, I am excited to announce to the ecosystem and community, go ahead and jump to the next slide, please. We're coming back to Lisbon, even bigger and better. So November 7th through the 10th, mark your calendars. We decided to go back and make this presence even stronger with the adjacent date location to Web Summit. You'll also see, see us have a presence there. Um, so let's go ahead and skip to the next slide, please. I'm not going to reveal too much on this call because we do have an announcement coming out next week at Consensus regarding the event um, where we will share more detail, but because it is the ecosystem and community, we want to make sure we share this with you in advance. So what does this event actually look like this year? It's pretty similar to what we've done in the past. November 7th is going to kick off the week with the opening party where we have like a big registration fun activation. It's also the hackathon opening ceremony. So everyone kind of gets together. Uh, they get a sense for what's going to happen in the week. And hopefully some good networking goes down on the 7th. November 8th and the 9th and the 10th are full conference days, more specifically the 8th and the 9th. We'll have two main stages, very similar to last year, where we have more of the larger conversations, keynotes, panels, firesides. And we'll have one stage dedicated to technical content and a lot of community technical content. So more knows on that on like when applications will open in the very next few weeks. If we can't get it out next week, which I'm really hoping we can, you'll know more um, likely at the beginning of May. And then November 10th will be a nice lighter day where it's all about the hackathon judging award ceremony and then our fabulous closing party, which was such a success last year. 
um, there's just going to be an amazing full agenda and full roster of activities to do this year. So I won't share the location and venues just yet because I really want to say that for next week, but I'm giving you a sneak peek here at the side. So we are going to do two conference venues this year. You know, as much as I wish we could have renewed at the Nearcon Warehouse last year with all of the amazing, fabulous water features. It wasn't in the cards for us this year. So developers will have their own space where they will have the community and technical stage. And that's going to be a 10 minute walk from the main conference venue. All of this is going to be in the Beatu area. So if you want to get a head start looking at hotels, looking at, you know, travel, whatever you kind of want to start peeking at, you can look at Beatu. That's where we will be. Um, the venues are only a 10 minute walk apart. We will have it very much like very easy navigation. It's very easy to walk from one to the other. Um, and there's a lot in store. So I, I won't reveal too much because I really want next week to be more of a major splash. Um, and, you know, there is some really amazing news that we're going to share also on this call with Riley. She hinted at it earlier. And we, as much as we want NearCon to travel and be an international event, you know, it's not happening this year. It will probably happen in the future, but we do want events to scale and we want to bring our events to multiple regions in the world, making them more accessible. So next slide, please. That means we're going to have near APAC this year. So Riley, I'm gonna kick it off to you because you've done an incredible amount of work and I'm so excited to partner with you on making this happen. Yeah, hello, it's me again. And I would like to share with you more information about the NIA Park. As Julia said that like the Nikon cannot happen in the other city in this year, but like it's, we will have another event called NIA Park. And NIA Park will be the place to gather all of the NIA ecosystem, the builder, the investor, and the lover in Asia together and see you on in Vietnam at the time of uh, 8 to 12 of September. And also the venue. So stay tuned. We will update the detailed venue next week on our Twitter. So please follow the New Vietnam Hub's Twitter to have more information about the venue and also about the target audience. We want to target to the Web2, Web3 builder, enterprises, uh, business developer, creator, and all of the government officials also can talk together in this one. And this is also the play for all of the blockchain community, builder, researcher, student, and VC, NFT community and gaming to join together to like experience all of the activity of the NIA Park event. And the main idea of the event is that we want, we will propose for, propose for the POS. That's why we will uh, share uh, co connect all of the power of the multi-chain decentralized application and we will promote about the front end decentralized on the POS and decide for all of the Apex users, especially happen in Vietnam, the top of the crypto adoption uh, country. And also this event will be connect the blockchain ecosystem together, connect the builder, investor, web to web, three builders, and also all of the uh, VC university, global media. Uh, and together we will write the Web3 mass adoption. And uh, I would like to share some of the main activities in the NIR Park. So we will have, before of the main conference event, we also have the series of the Hackathon, Bootcamp Hackathon. So that's why we call this in the Hackfest. And in the main activity, we will have some of the keynote panel discussion, uh, a place to show up the VR for the user to experience some of the VR activity. And I also invite some of the Web2 technology to show up on here so we can have some of the, the uh, the bridge, the high bridge between the Web 2 and Web 3 on the technology show and have the place for the NFT and gaming activities and also have place for the hacker, the coder, they can place and also um, compete together and all of the booth exhibition for the new ecosystem. And yeah, if you want to have more information, please visit the website. More information will update later. And uh, who want to share and also join on the event near park, please feel free to contact me. And uh, once again, uh, stay tuned and more information will be uploaded on the Twitter of the Mini Vietnam Hub. Thank you so much. And see you all in Vietnam this year. All right, folks, I think this is uh, where I I join in. So I'm Alex, uh, Chief Product Officer at Pagoda. Um, 
David, we might need to refresh the presentation really quick because it was a quick slide change. Cool. If that's okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about the boss. So we're going to make a big uh, unveiling at Consensus in a, a few. I guess it's like a week now. Um, but I wanted to give kind of a preview of how we're how we're thinking about the boss uh, to the community and really where is it positioned um, in the crypto economy and for enterprises and individuals. So um, you guys are going to get a sneak peek. So just you know, bringing it back to, I would say the the high level, like what what is the point of the boss? Why are we here? And we found that you know, for for most people who are interested in the open web or web three, that decentralization, distribution, and discovery are are three key things that they need. Um, and our goal is to replace centralized platforms with decentralized connections between devs, companies, and users. That's an ecosystem with community participation. What does that turn into? It means developers can quickly build and easily distribute their apps while getting a simple flow and control over their data. So if we go to the next slide, this is a, a way to think about this. So these are like real trade-offs of how you might try to build uh, an app, a web app or a website um, you know, for, for something uh, that you care about. So on the top, we have distribution level, right? So that's the y-axis. And on the left axis, we have decentralization level. So if we look, um, if you want to be highly centralized, go to the top left corner, and uh, you want a lot of distribution, right? You might make a Facebook group for your community and then like host a, a website or a web app on Firebase, right? So it's like a Google Cloud, easy building platform. Um, so that's how a lot of people build things today, right? Like I would say actually the majority of people do that when they want to like connect with the community and have some sort of experience around it. Maybe it's because you're all interested in, um, you know, a sustainable development. Um, now, if we go to the opposite quadrant, right? So maximum decentralization and really difficult to distribute, you might build something with Bitcoin and you might run your own Linux server, right? So you're not using a cloud service provider and use like React open source. And so you could build that same group, right? That maybe does donations um, and has a community around it. But this would be like really, really hard to distribute. Like you have to go drive all your own attention through socials, um, get people to come to your website, spend a ton of money on marketing. Um, you don't really get any help also in your scaffolding, your hosting, like this is hard mode. And we do know people who are like this, right? I and mean, if you know any Bitcoin maxis, right? This is what they believe to be the only way to do things. Um, now in the middle, we've got what we see a lot of, I would say like enterprises, like Starbucks or something that's moving towards where you might use Polygon and AWS and build an iOS app. And you get some distribution from the app store. Um, you're kind of a little bit more decentralized because you are using a blockchain, right? You're using Polygon, um, but you're using a cloud service provider like AWS um, likely to um, um, you know, host your server, which is highly centralized and iOS and the, and, and the rules around the Apple store right, are also highly centralized. So you're kind of in this like middle ground. Um, now on the right, what we're actually hoping to do is like remove this trade-off, right? This is the point of the boss is to say, hey, you can actually get maximum decentralization and maximum distribution. And you get maximum decentralization because everything is hosted through blockchain from your front end to your transaction layer, as well as you can use multiple types of blockchains. And you get maximum distribution because we have a website, one of the gateways that's near.org where you could distribute to, but also because of the advantages of hosting an app or a website on a blockchain, anything you build can actually be hosted anywhere, right? So with a few lines of JavaScript, you can embed your web app or your experience into somebody else's app. You can make a partnership, let's say, in the example of sustainable development, you make a partnership with um, you know, BNP Par. Parapas, right, which is really big as being a sustainable bank. And they could have be, now become a distribution channel for you with a few lines of JavaScript. So anything becomes your distribution ability. That's, and that's really the point of the open web, right? That's like, that's the dream. And that's only possible with the boss because your front ends are now no longer hosted on either an app 
or a traditional client-server model. So hopefully this, this is gives some helpful context. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so let's talk about individual challenges. So there's three groups that we're really starting to, to focus on to, to bring closer into our community around the boss. The first is builders. So, um, you know, building in Web3 is still hard. And traditionally, Near has been one of the easier things uh, to, to get started with um, and has definitely been an innovator in this space. But we still want to make it even easier. It's still not quite as easy as, you know, just setting up a Firebase or going to uh, Squarespace to like create a website. And that's what we're going to try to get it to, right? Um, now, these builders, they need to scale fast. So they need to build a prototype really quickly, get their first 100 users or super fans, getting feedback. And then, of course, be able to keep scaling after that through low cost user acquisition, which we're going to show through near tasks as well as other partnerships at Consensus um, about how you can get your users really quickly without having to just advertise um, on you know, Facebook or, or Google. Um, and then um, you need to get access to other relevant users, right? And so near.org um, you know, gets a lot of traffic. And there are a lot of super fans in crypto that you could even, without even advertising, get more attention to. So the, the kind of analogy here, and I, I love the marketing team came up with this, right? Is like, I'm scared of releasing my new track to an empty nightclub. Like I have a cool idea and I want to be able to build it really fast, this song really fast, but I'm hoping there's at least someone there to listen to my, my cool idea. Uh, next. Enterprises. So... Enterprises we define are like big brands, right? This would be like a Starbucks. This would be like a household consumer name. Um, and adopting Web3 technologies is really hard for them. So they aren't really um, you know, savvy on all of the uh, you know, nuances of, of working with a blockchain. Um, they're used to using services like Salesforce or other software as a service systems that make it like pretty easy for them to focus more on their business needs and their product needs than that technology beneath it. Um, and the primary thing that they've been really having to struggle with is like, how do I onboard my users uh, when they're getting started? And so we have fast off that's gonna make it so that even just through an email, they can even combine with their existing user base, which they almost always have an email for. And then again, integrate very simply into their apps or their websites um, without really any changes to their existing technology or product. Um, they uh, need help, right, in being able to use different forms of blockchain technology. So it's not just about NFTs or fungible tokens, but sometimes they might be working on an existing chain and they need to uh, be able to inter integrate that into uh, a platform. And that's where the boss comes in. Um, or they might have another business that they need to uh, know clearly that whatever they build for the first business is reusable for the second. That's where our interoperability of our front end comes in. And they're really ultimately looking for new revenue opportunities. A lot of businesses are seeing that there are secondary markets or there are um, changes to you know, uh, consumer trends and how much they're actually coming into you know, the office or, or doing in-person experiences. And Web3 offers a really engaging digital way for them to build what we call community commerce um, and, and find new revenue. So the tension here is, you know, starting a journey is really, really hard, and they need a guide to get to their ultimate business vision. Next slide. Individuals. So Web3 doesn't feel relevant or accessible. Uh, there's no clear understanding of how it can help. And I think, like, we are here because we care and we believe in, in the opportunity of what, what Web3 can create. But for many new people, like, it's just not clear, um, like, how much is this is going to really help me? Right. Um, and I think what we're going to start to see, and this is, I, I would say, individuals is the most nascent of our, our demographics right now. Like, it's going to take much more time. But over time, we're going to see is that it's going to be just as easy as Web2. Um, there's going to be a selection of engaging apps that you can have ownership of and you can know it's safe. And we're investing a lot into things like trust and safety um, to make sure that, you know, it, you don't have to have a compromise over finding value and feeling safe. Next slide. Okay, so how we solve this, like real features that we're gonna start talking about uh, in more detail at Consensus, right? Simple distribution and discovery with Near through our website and other means with co-marketing, 
a convenient component ecosystem that you can get started from, no hosting or special development environment. So you can just start building. Next. Enterprises, right? Use your existing websites or apps, diversify your business models, um, make it easy to onboard, use React. Those are engineers that usually have React-based engineers and most enterprise sticks, most commonly used JavaScript framework, and build once on any blockchain and deploy anywhere you need. Next. And individuals, discover cool apps, keep control of your data, get started in seconds without needing crypto or downloading apps that just get in there with an email and a really simple search that they're all very used to, right? From using things like Pinterest or LinkedIn or Twitter to find what they're interested in. Next. So what does this ultimately mean? Well, the boss is an open source platform. That's an alternative to Google, to Apple, to Facebook, to Microsoft, the gatekeepers of the internet that we know today. It's a full software services platform, just like those um, groups offer. And this is where you can choose as decentralized as you want to be. So as I showed in that chart, like you could choose less centralization or you can go all in and, and really be able to get the benefits of distribution and decentralization. So we help you get started with the basics of your journey and get you all the way to where you get to see the full benefits of crypto to both your users and your business model. And I think that's it. Well, thank you. Thank you guys, uh, that was quite a packed agenda and thank you to all our presenters. Again, if you have topics you wanna hear, you wanna talk about, please reach out. We'd love actually to build the town hall agenda uh, with all of you guys. And on that note, hoping to see many of you at consensus and if not before that, then of course near con and if not before that, then there's a score near APAC. Thank you guys, bye. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.